What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the R Visuals Camera Move Transition Pack for Resolve 16. I'm super excited, let's get into it. So the guys over at R Visuals sent me this transition pack and asked me to review it, give you my thoughts, um, kind of put it through its paces, and that's what I did over the last week or so. I have to say right off the bat, I was super impressed with the presentation, with the documentation, with the troubleshooting. I mean, everything across the board, they did a really good job. So out of a five stars, I give them a five for just straight up presentation for the entire pack when you download it and open it up. Installing this transition pack was also a breeze and they also give you that troubleshooting website that you can hop onto and watch a whole bunch of videos. So if you get stuck or you figure it out and close it and then later when you open your project, you have a hard time all those troubleshooting videos are there. So I don't use a plethora of transitions, but if I was gonna use some, this would be some of my top picks. Let me show you how I used some of these. So let me show you how I would go about doing this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna create a new timeline. We're gonna go to the use custom settings. We're gonna do the timeline of 60 frames because I know that's what it was shot in. We're gonna create that. We're gonna grab two clips that I already have kind of trimmed right here. We'll drop that there. Drop this here, and yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the 60 frame folder, and of course they have all these different folders in here, so whatever your project is, whether it's 60, 24, 30, 50, is coming soon, you just pick the folder that you need for your project and timeline. So I've got 60 frames selected. I'm just gonna scroll through until I find one that I kind of am digging. Uh, that one's actually pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag and drop it right here. We're gonna zoom in here a little bit. I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go up here at the decompose in place. And you can see that I did actually a really good job lining those up with those markers. But if you didn't and it was moved over here, you would just line these cut markers, which it actually even pops up on the screen. It says cut here. You would line that up to your cut of your video clip. We'll put that back over here, line it right up, and we're gonna take this demo piece right on top. That's just images just showing you what it's doing, and we're just gonna delete those. And now you can see that it put the transition right underneath it beautifully. So what I'm gonna do is set an out point. I'm gonna go up here to the top with playback. We're gonna go to catch render, make sure that's on user. I'm gonna highlight everything, I'm gonna right click on it, and I am gonna to go to the Render Catch Fusion Output. I'm gonna turn that on. This force renders it inside Resolve. This is something not a lot of people know about, so it's a good trick to know. Overall, I really am digging this transition pack. However, there is always things that I'm not a fan of, as I'm sure some of the things I put out and sell to people, they're not a fan of. But I think it's good to point these out because the creators hear it and then they kind of fix it and they try to do the best they can for the next review. Vision. Honestly, my biggest complaint overall is you have to make a timeline that is exactly 24 frames if you're doing 24 frames. You have to do the same thing with 60, 30, 50 when it comes, I'm sure. Like these video clips I shot was actually shot in 59.940 and if I made a timeline that was 59 frames, it does not work. And it goes the same thing with 24 frames. And I know a lot of people out there have cameras that only shoot 23.976, or they only shoot 59.940, and it doesn't actually shoot true 60 frames. Not a complete huge deal, you just have to create the timeline, and that is kind of your workaround, is make sure that timeline is actually set to whatever it is. I haven't really noticed a whole lot of difference. I don't even think your viewers would notice a difference but it is something that you need to know. But again, I'm sure that's something they're gonna look into and figure out how they can tweak and fix in their next revisions. But until then, it's just a little workaround. Not a big deal, because it's still an amazing transition pack and it has a buttload, I mean a buttload, of transitions inside there. Overall, do I recommend this transition pack? I would say yes. I would still buy this transition pack. Disclaimer, they did send it to me for free to review, but I'm giving you my full honest opinion of this transition pack. I would check it out. I'll have links for it in the description below. They were so cool that they actually gave us a promo code. Type in the promo code Josh Haynes and the first 30 people are gonna get 15% off of this transition pack. And I know we've got quite a few subscribers in here, so if you're watching this 
video, you might want to jump on it before someone else does. It's a really good pack and I love supporting other creators and helping them grow. That's it for me today, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Drop a comment below and some other things you want to see me review or some tutorials you want to see. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already with the bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. I'm the Iron Giant. You guys are amazing. I'm out.